Hi and welcome to this week's Something for the Weekend. I'm Tony, sales manager here at Martin Lynch & Sons and this week we're looking at the top HF mobile antenna options in 2022. So HF mobile, is it for you? Well probably like myself, the home QTH is quite noisy so uh, I suggest yes it probably is for you. Um, with holiday season coming up as well, there's nothing better than to go on a long drive and operate some DX whilst mobile. So what do you need to do firstly? Well you've got a radio, Obviously, you're going to get an antenna at some point, but you're going to need to connect those. So what better way to do that than with our CAB-MC range of cables. These are all pre-made cables, as you can see here. All very good quality, and we've got different options for different budgets of these as well. So as you can see, they come complete with a PL259 on one end, and an angled SO239 on the other. Now, we've got the collar on the top here as well. So we just take this off and the reason for this collar is so that you can pop it into a mount, slides in that way and then gets secured on top. And then once you've done that, obviously the antenna then mounts onto the top there. So as I said, we've got a few options of these. This is the uh, budget option or the better value option. And then we have the CAB-MC here as well which again comes with the SO239 on one end, PL259 on the other. It's a nice sheathing there. And what you'll notice here is it actually has a skinnier fly lead. So if you're attaching it to a hatchback, etc., this can then be shut down into the rubber of the door and makes installation a lot easier. Now they come in a variety of sizes, so I think these are the four meter ones as standard, and we also do a five meter version as well, so if you've got a larger vehicle, a state vehicle. So that goes onto your radio, then obviously you're gonna need a mount. So looking at the mounts, now with HF mobile, it's not like fitting a VHF, UHF antenna, which is you know maybe only a meter long or so. So I always recommend that you go for one of the higher quality mounts. So I think nice and sturdy, something like the diamond K400 for example, which is this one here. Really sturdy construction, really easy to fit. And as I said there, you just slip the SO239 into there. And on the other side here, you'll see there's a little lip and that basically slides onto the panel, whether it be your boot or your hatchback, or I've actually seen these mounted onto door frames as well. Not something I'd recommend, but it can be done. And then obviously you've got a bar across here, you adjust the Allen keys and fix it firmly. Now I used to run one of these on one of my previous cars. Uh, it was on there for about three or four years. I had no problems with it whatsoever, stayed solid, made sure it was nice and tight with the Allen keys. And yeah, kept the antenna up for a long time. So they are sort of in the region of about 40 pounds or so. If that's stretching your, your budget, then I would suggest one of the Nagoya mounts as well. So, as you can see, again, nicely built. You know, not up to the, the same quality as the, of the diamond one, but it's still very, very sturdy and it's fully adjustable as well. And nice touch with the Nagoya stuff actually, is you've got this rubberized base on it. So, if you're doing HF Mobile, Obviously remember about earthing as well, you want to run an earth strap as well if you can to the car because you want the best possible ground for HF operation. Now, what if you can't put a mount on or you're on a higher car, etc. Then yes, you can go for the mag mount route. It does work, you know, but as I said, just bear in mind, you, you're not going to get the same sort of grounding. So take a look for an example again, HF antennas being fairly large, mag 145 by Serio. As you can see here, PL259 on one end and a nice rubber boot as well to protect the vehicle. And these are fairly easy to get off once they're on. So if you wanted to go for a mag mount and get better grounding and you've got really big muscles because they do take a bit, <laughs> a bit of lifting to get off, go for one of the tri-mags. Now this one is a 3 8 mount, so you may already have some mobile antennas that you want to use at a 3 8 or we do an SO239 variant, and you've got three magnets on it, nice bar for securing, and just a kind of softer, softer base to this. 
It's not velvet. They used to make these in a velvet base, but I do believe rubber boots are available for this as well as an extra accessory. So they work really well for HF. Um, also, bear in mind, I know Jonathan's got a story of uh, a mag mount that came off the back of his car and smashed the, uh, smashed the window. So bear in mind, if you've got a mag mount, don't go too fast and drive carefully with it. So that's your mounts sorted out. What about antennas? Let's go and take a look. So starting off, we're going to go with one of these, which is one of our MA range of antennas, as you can see here. So nice and simple, PL259 on the bottom, so that would work straight away with one of those cable assemblies. Base loaded, and as you can see, if you're not used to sort of base loaded antennas, You've basically got a load of wire here to make the antenna resonant. And then you've got your whip on top. Now this is the 10 meter variant, so it's not too long. And what you do is adjust for resonance with these is basically two Allen keys on here. Just adjust these bolts, lift it up, slide it down, depending on whether you're too high or too low on the band. Now these are great value, around about 25 pounds or so. It will get you on the air. Great for going longer journeys and if you leave your antenna on the car then, yeah, perfect. Absolutely perfect for operation. So, if you like that or you've had one, but you want to go that little step further, something of a slightly better quality, then I suggest the Diamond range of HF mobile antennas. There we go. So again, all of these antennas are available from top band up to 10 meters. So you can cover every band possible. You know, it's not, it's not a problem. Whatever band you prefer to operate on, you can get an antenna for it. So again, you see here, there's your base loaded coils. And the good thing with the diamonds, and I say this every time, is I have this little collar here. Just adjust that and you can slide the antenna up or down for resonance again, and then just do it up. And that's great. I mean, if you're working on 20 meters, and, and obviously if you're operating HF mobile, it's gonna be a fairly narrow bandwidth on these antennas. So, you know, sort of 50 to 150 kcs. Um, you can just quickly stop, pop out, lower it down, get yourself back on the DX window on 20 meters, for example, and away you go. Now, I really do like these, especially if you've got a, a slightly more modern car as well, because they're quite classy with the black tip. Okay, moving on from that, if you want to move away from um, single band base loaded and you're doing static mobile, and I'll say that, make sure it is static mobile with these, even though some guys are driving around with these, is we do this kind of screwdriver antennas basically. Again, from the MA range, PL259 on the bottom. And now the difference with these, this is where he says he hasn't done this for a while. Come on is they slide. So you'll see here, you've got measurements, and you basically slide it up or down, depending on the band that you want to operate. Obviously you'll hear the noise floor come up on the uh, receiver, and then you can fine tune by adjusting again with the Allen key. So these are great, as I said, static mobile, if you're parked up on a hill, uh, band conditions change and you want to get straight onto another band, just adjust it and away you go. And all of these antennas are good for 100 watts SSB, no problem. Okay, moving across from that, as I said, another variant, and one that's been around for many, many years, so kind of, uh, I don't know the actual technical term for this, but uh, kind of still base loaded, but you're using tapping points. So again, multi-banded, and you literally just go quite firm, which is good. And you change it onto your tapping points, depending on the band you're going to use. And again, you can adjust the top of the antenna again, and it's an Allen key as well for adjustment on these. Uh, these have been around for years. I do know guys that drive around with these on as well. They just wrap it round, and uh, it's a good option. So... 
if that's not enough for you and you find out that your signal's not going far enough and you want a little bit more, as I always say, a bit more metal in the air, as they say, to, to, to get a bit of a bigger signal, then we do still have these in stock, which are the Bushcom Highlander antennas. Now, construction-wise, these are phenomenal. So based on a military design from the guys in Australia, give you eight bands, as you can see, all clearly marked where you need to tap it. And the beauty of this, as I said, the construction on this is beautiful. You've got this little collar on here, and again, slide it, or pop it back in for adjustment. Now, as I said, you can drive around with these, but bear in mind, it's, especially with this, it's, it's really well constructed, but it's quite heavy as well, so you may need to guy when you're doing that. Another option we've got is the Hustler range of antennas now. Huge in the States, these Hustler antennas. A lot of guys are using these and you can run multiple resonators with them as well. So basically you have a mobile mast and there's various, various sizes sorry, of uh, these masts. This is obviously one of the uh, taller sections. They're 3 8 fit in on these. And then what you do, oh, just drop that there, is uh, obviously make sure you fix these properly before you go mobile. But what you do, is you get these little res resonators so this one for 20 meters for example and you get a whip for each one which slots in and then you do a better job than me and you make sure that this is tight once you've got it resonant fits onto the top of the mount and away you go now these are really high Q as well so as i said there's loads of reviews of, of these hustle ones online um, one thing to bear in mind with the hustler ones is they are fairly slow at shipping at the moment so if we've not got it in stock just bear in mind that we may have to pre-order it for you okay but these these are great and they do a kind of hat design where you can run three or four or five of these um, so you can be multi-band so that's a good choice now again as i said always a compromise using a uh, small whip on hf so what if you want to go that little bit further you're parked up and you're just thinking oh you know what I need to get a bit more of a signal out there. Well, you've all seen these all over YouTube. Loads of guys are using these. These are the 17 foot telescopic whips. This one's an MFJ variety. We do our own version of these as well, which is a little bit better value. And there's a chameleon version of this as well, which is really well constructed. So what you do with this, 3 8 fit in on the bottom onto one of the mounts, put it up, and then maybe either tune it for resonance. This will give you probably 20 meters up to 10 meters quite easily, or use a uh, auto tuner with it. There we go. All sounds like a, bit, a little bit too much work, manually changing that, having to get out of the car to change an antenna. Well, if you're running a AC radio, something like an 891, an 857, a 991, for example, then obviously, there's only one choice for you, that's the ATAS, which will give you 40 meters through to 70 SEMS. And if you've not seen one of these before, basically you plug it in, it sends current DC down the uh, coax line, hit tune on the radio, and then it will automatically go up or down, depending on the band that you're using. Now, as I said, the reason why I always choose hefty mounts is because obviously that's quite a chunky antenna. But absolutely fine. Bear in mind, you can't adjust it while you're driving. Always best to stop, as it, as it says in the manual with these, and always grab from the base when you're removing it. And you'll get years of use out of these. I've had one since I joined Martin, and uh, yeah, still going really, really well. Don't have a Yaesu radio, probably have an iCob or maybe a Kenwood mobile. Then Diamond do one, which again, is an automatic antenna. So the difference with this one is it won't automatically tune with your radio unless you can find a, a relevant in interface or want to make your own interface for it. But you do get a button which makes sends it up and down and then obviously you can check your SWR on the radio that you're using. So again, these are a great choice. I've got a couple of uh, Norwegian amateurs that shop with us and they both run these on their Jeeps and they absolutely swear by them. They sort of travel all over Europe using these and they've worked loads and loads of the X. So hopefully that's given you a bit of insight as to which mobile antennas are available on the market and what might be the right choice for you depending on your operating, whether you're static or whether you're just going to operate one band all the time. So talking to bands, 
favourite band for HF Mobile? 40 metres. You know, if you're driving around all day long, just say you're a delivery driver, for example, 40 metres is great. Early in the morning, you can be working DX. During the day, a bit of into G, and then come the evenings, back out onto the continent again. So that's worth bearing in mind. Now, one bonus feature for you. What if you really want to go extreme when you're parked up? Well, for those of you that came to our open day, uh, speaking of which, we're having another one on November the 5th. Who remembers Callan's installation? So, if you do remember it, and if you don't, look at this picture. There you go. Park up, mount yourself a DX Commander pole, bit of wire, and away you go. You could be the biggest mobile signal around. Take care and we'll see you next week.